So, we have now discussed uh, mostly we have discussed this scenario a single project single resource is the scenario we have discussed ok, but you can imagine there are other scenarios like single project multiple resources, multiple project single resource or multiple project multiple resources ok, which do you think uh, as a project man as a project manager what do you think you should be dealing with? Yes, as a project manager you are certainly the, the, the challenge you have is single project multiple resources ok. Now, but there are project managers which need different projects at the same right, time. Right, right. So, so if you if you are for example, there are many builders who build homes, they will have a project manager managing multiple projects, but sometimes when we look at it as uh, what do you say those I mean when, when I when we are t talking about single project multiple resource we mean a large project ok, typically there is a single project manager, but you are right they can have a single project manager with multiple medium or small projects and in which case he is yes in some ways dealing with multiple projects multiple resources ok, but again in terms of scale that might not be as challenging as a single project ok, the, the volume or the repetitiveness typically multiple project uh, single project manager multiple projects are residential buildings and things like that. Now, who has to deal with multiple projects multiple resources? The large company, the large company so ok like we said when we are talking about uh, buying materials in bulk or you have a plant and machinery division which itself is a profit center that my plant and machinery division owns equipment in the company and I have to you know give equipment to different sites, I have to charge the site for the equipment and I have to show profit to the company for charging the site for my equipment ok. So, so that there then you have these uh, then they really are, are challenged with multiple project multiple resources. Another example of multiple project multiple resource which is happening today is what we talk about metro rail you take a single company ok, they might have multiple uh, they have mul they have multiple projects just on the metro rail in the city ok, they have a station building here, a station building there, a rail section here and they have to share resources between these multiple projects ok, there might be and it is a challenge ok, if you get to a, so if you really get to some of our large construction companies they are spread all over the country and they cannot there are very few resources they, they can share across the country you know some very heavy cranes things like that, but within a region there is a lot of resource sharing that needs to take place and it really it is quite a challenge ok. Any questions? It is when you have a, a very valuable resource, yes yeah. You require a right. I, yeah, that is from a that is from a uh, 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 no that is not from a vendor's perspective. I have to take get material for multiple projects, and that material if I can get a bulk discount on that material. Yes, this other example is equipment, uh, and typically it, it might be it is it is uh, I mean uh, there was for example in in some case you might have some uh, some kind of pumps which are heavy duty and you know you can only use it you you know where such high volume you you are not going to have many of those on on your in your company, but you will need it on certain projects. Common example is cranes ok yeah cra cra just just heavy lift cranes ok a company will need it it is it is a very valuable resource because if you have it you can use it get onto a site do a lift and leave the site very efficient, but to invest in a crane is gross, but its usage has to be across multiple projects you cannot write it off on a single project. Any other examples you can think of? Right, so, so I, the, I, yeah so sometimes the owner decides that he has so many projects it is not the contractor who does the resource sharing it is the owner who actually invests in the crane and or the equipment and does that ok. So, our focus will mainly be on on single project single resource to illustrate how resources can are modeled and the basics of it, but we will go on to the challenge of looking at multiple project multiple resources in a later lecture ok. You will find there is a lot of subjectivity that comes into it 
it is you know when we are trying to do the scheduling when we are trying to do the uh, an optimal schedule there is a lot of subjectivity and that is what still makes it a challenge okay. So now let us go on to uh, two resources okay everything remains the same what we are taken as resource 1 resource 2 and we are here we are uh, taking a scenario where there is an equipment and manpower we are saying the equipment is required for, for the first half of each activity so the equipment will be used for some time but the manpower is required throughout okay in principle everything is exactly the same all you are doing is adding up the, you know the total for each day here so you have resource 1 resource 2 okay and you will see this is this is the for that day what the resource load is and uh, so you can see for equipment it goes up to 3 for manpower also it goes up to 3 and here we are using unit quantities just for illustration so it everything kind of remains uh, you know the numbers remain small and if we want to visualize what is the the uh, the histogram we can kind of visualize the equivalent histogram in this way and this would be the cumulative resource graph for the two. Now this becomes the cumulative becomes meaningful when we put cost into it okay and we are going to be so we are saying the cost of the the manpower is 250 per day and the equipment is 500 per day and now we have cost loaded the bar chart okay so all of these values now relate to cost so here you can see uh, all of this this is 250 is for the resource 1 and for resource 2 you can see the, the values and the cumulative values for resource 1 cumulative values for resource 2 and the equivalent graph is is over here so this is the blue line shows you the resource 1 cumulative graph the red line for resource 2 and the green line the total okay so if this was my project I will have to be able I mean I can I, can, I'll, I will have to I can know what what my cumulative cost is I, how much money would I have spent by day 10 for example okay now let us do a small exercise okay so this is uh, a network you are familiar with the durations are uh, are little reduced so that you can uh, get it within a reasonable time and you will be able to uh, plot these uh, do the calculations for a lesser number of days but uh, go ahead plot the network so you have give, I've given you the duration I've given you the resource I've given you is trucks okay and we are also are going to ask ourselves a question what if only 10 trucks are available what would you, you do but before we get to the second question let us just plot the resource histogram for the early start okay the, plot the resource histogram for the early start you need to draw a network analysis how will you draw it otherwise Gantt chart. Gantt use chart. A yeah so how will you draw a Gantt chart try it see if you can do it without the network analysis okay it is something which you want to try yeah you want to try doing this without the network you can draw it because it is simple enough but you will see that you are anyway doing a network analysis in your mind.
So what you don't need to plot it. What we will do is we'll come out with numbers at the at the bottom. Just put the numbers. The plot will be, and does we'll take it. Okay, do you get? So this is the network. Okay, it gives you a bit of practice to do your network analysis. Okay, so what I have here is basically a, a table which we are going to enter values in. I have the resources, number of resources. So when we take a, what it goes from? Okay, so that's the bar chart for a, and we are entering. Okay, two two in each. Okay, what about B? B goes from three two three five, and we have one. C five to nine, five to nine. six no. to ten. Yeah, that's what six. So, so that is that. So, when we say five here, this is the five. end of five. Yeah, this is the start of day six. Okay, so this is day six to nine. And it has six. D is. It's the same. And it has four. E is five to seven. F nine to eleven. Okay, I'm going to. And it has two eleven to fourteen. Yeah. Which one? E should have four. That's right. Okay, so we are at G. Now we go to H. H goes from seven to ten. And it has one. And I is to fifteen. And it has. Okay, so it becomes two, two, one, 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 fourteen, eleven, eleven, three, two, 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 one. Okay, so this becomes the resource profile. Now. Uh, which are our critical activities? We know that. So, so the first thing. So, the, so this is answers the first question. This is the profile. Now, the second is. Are there any questions on this? Okay. So, once the profile is determined, now I know I have trouble. Right. I will not be able to do this early start profile because I have fourteen and eleven. Is there anything I can do about it? Utilize the floats. I have to utilize the floats. Okay, so in order to utilize the floats, I have to understand what my first of all, where which activities have floats. So I know that my A, this, this is critical. B is critical. C is critical. F, F, G, and I. 
Okay, so all of this I cannot, I cannot, there is no float on B, I, it is fixed, I cannot move these at all, okay. F, right, G, and F. So whatever profile change I have to do is with by moving D, E, and H, and H, that is here. Okay, so now we can see that we can see from the network and from here that my D D is able to move. How how far can I move D? I can move D all the way up to here, right? So I will I can basically move the float allows me to move D all the way there, right? So if I move, so I'm going to put this in orange. So now I'm moving D all the way. So this is my four days. I, I want so basically this is getting overloaded here because of the six. So I'm moving D out of the influence of C, and I'm going to let's let's take it, let's give it as much floats. So I'm going to move D here one. On, I can move further, but is this enough? No, because there's three. Four, five, six, enough, seven. No. It's enough. It's okay. Okay. So if I do this, what I basically done is move D away from the influence of the six. So basically, I land up at ten. Ten. Seven. 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 Six. Six. Six, two, one. Okay, so I have, I am now within my equipment constraint. The amount are there. Okay, so I have ten, and because I am able to use my float, I am able to do my job still within my project duration. Okay, so here we have talked about single resource. Okay, single project. You can imagine now if we are trying to do this with multiple resources where this might require more of another resource, something else might require more of a, another resource and now I am trying to balance all and all my resources to be within my uh, available, the problem becomes more complex. Okay. Any, any questions? This. So we can now add, you know, we can put cost, plot the cost curve. All of this becomes just procedural. Okay, we will. Uh, I mean, you you will you'll need to do it so that you get a feel of it. But it is it is relatively simple. The key here is your network. So again, the network analysis is what provides us the bar chart. Network analysis is what gives us the float. We are only resource loading the results of the network analysis, we are calculating the total resources on a day and that gives us a lot of information to be able to manage the project. Okay. Let us uh, kind of look at the application of this into the two span bridge. So this is, it is, you remember, okay, what, were the, what were the resources we considered here? The, the key resources. So, I'm, I'm, if you remember, this had things like delivery of piles, you know, beams, casting beams, piling. So, we are just taking a few key resources which are to do with the crew. Okay, we are taking, uh, we, are, we are, we are going to take just the concreting crew, the piling crew, the bridge launching crew, and uh, here is the uh, the bar chart of uh, of the two span bridge. And if you recall, this is with unlimited resources, yeah, we put it on to a, a, a project planning software, so you will start slowly getting introduced to project planning software too. And you remember we had two critical paths, okay, we had the two abutments that were critical, the middle was not so critical, you can see generally that is here. And uh, we are using these resources, we are using, you know, the precasting gang, we are using a piling, we are using concreting. We are using a, a group for a resource for uh, girder launching and road work. Okay, so these are the key uh, resource groups we are going to use, and we have basically loaded the resources. And you would now we are talking about multiple resources 
single project and you have to get it in you can see the software does it for you it, it shows you the resource histogram for each of the resources which we are considering and if you have if you are going to say we, we cannot see the unit here but if you are going to say that only one gang is available for each each of the resources only a single is available the over allocated resources are shown and now you have to take a decision do I if I really want to finish the project in that time it means I have to mobilize that amount of resources or it have to go to shift work if I have only assumed one single shift here I might have to go to multiple shifts okay to finish it within the same uh, calendar days so these are the decisions a project manager has to make and resources have a lot to do with how they are how they are made effective okay so to kind of summarize what we covered here we looked at the influence of resources on project cost and time we discussed it and you know that it has significant influence we resource loaded a schedule saw the histograms okay saw the cumulative cost curve you know the cumulative and then we actually used the histogram to find overloading of the resources okay we looked at the curve the cumulative cost we discussed the s curve we saw how it varies with early start late start and how that can influence a project we also used in the example here we used float to resolve over allocation and this is a very important uh, step as to how to use float and how we can uh, not only for over allocation but in a later lecture we will see how, how we can use float to level resources okay thank you